Okay, so the plan for today is we're going to go over the problems that you guys ask for. And the big thing that you guys ask for is word problems. So I'm going to put that at the end of the video. And then I'll also make like a, a way so you can skip forward to watch those if that's the only thing that you cared about. Um, the, pro the main problems I'm going to go over is 11 and 12, 15 and 16, 21 through 26, and 31 until the end. Um, if you have more questions than that, I'm fine. Um, if you send me an email and I can make a quick video on that. Um, it's just overarching. Uh, that's mainly what people were kind of asking for. A couple of people asked for the table on number two. So I might also do that problem, but we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, when I'm looking at these two equations and I need to write them in standard form, what you have to realize is that standard form is different than slope intercept form because the x and the y are on the same side. So that's your main goal, getting the x and y on the same side. Well, with this one right here, for me to get the x and the y on the same side, I'd have to add this x to the other side so it's on the same side as the y. That'd give me 5, 6, x plus y equals 10. The last thing is you can't have a fraction in standard form. So if you have a fraction, you have to get rid of it. We get rid of that by multiplying everything by that number. And so when you multiply by 6, that would cancel. I get 5x plus 6y is equal to 60. Now that's in standard form. Try this other one. Again, uh, you want to have the x and y on the same side. So I'd add over 5, uh, 5 2y. And then I would get 3x plus 5 over 2y is equal to negative 9. At this stage, again, what I'd want to do is I'd want to multiply everything by that number right there. And those would be my two answers in standard form. Let's try the next ones. Okay, so some people had confusions with this, and I get why. This is in a form that we've never seen before. So anytime we have stuff in a form we've never seen before, I always like to think back to the basics. To graph functions, what do I need to have happen? Oh, I need it to be in slope-intercept form. What does that look like? Oh, that looks like y being all by itself. So when I look at this, I have a 3 by the y that I don't want. So that's something I have to take care of. I also have this 3 fourths that needs to be distributed. So I'm going to distribute the 3 fourths first. So I'm going to get y plus 3 is equal to 3 fourths x plus, well, 3 fourths times 8. So 3 times 8 divided by 4, which would give you 24 divided by 4, which would give you 6. Then I would minus 3 on both sides to get it away from the y. And then when you see this, you should go, oh, now I can see what to graph. I'd graph this up at 3. So I'd go up 1, 2, 3. I'd plot that point. And then I would graph this by going up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I have my line. Let's look at this one. Again, it's the same kind of thing. You need to distribute. And then you have that 5 that needs to be moved over. So we'll have y minus 5 is equal to negative 4x minus 12. I would add 5 to both sides. When I do that, I'd get y equals negative 4x minus 7. Since it's 4, it's really a fraction of 4 over 1, um, just so we can have a slope. When I graph this, I would go to minus 7. And then we have a problem because I'd have to go down 4 and over 1, so it kind of goes off the graph. I'm going to check if that's minus 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Nope, I was 1 off. 7. So again, if we go down, we'd go down and off the graph. Um, so to fix that, instead of going down 4 and over 1, I can go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and left 1. And you can see that's going to take the same route for your graph. Okay. Let's try the next one. Okay, so let's write some line equations. 
When you're writing line equations, the first thing to realize is that you want y equals mx plus b. Like that's what you would like. So because that's what you'd like, the first thing we have to do is we have to find m and b. Well, in this problem, to find m, what you do is you subtract the two points. So you do the y's minus, like you subtract the two y's, you subtract the two x's. In this case, I'd get negative 6 over negative 4. Well, then that would give me my slope to be uh, negative, or positive 3 over 2, x plus b. Now I just need to find the b term. To do that, what they gave me is they gave me an x value and a y value. So what I'll do with that x and y is I'll plug that in. So instead of writing y here, I'd write negative 1. And instead of writing x over there, I'd write 6. Uh, that would be 18 divided by 2, which would be 9. And then this is a really important point. Some people try to divide and stuff. Just look what signs in between your b and your 9. It's addition. So I'd subtract, and I'd have b equals negative 10. Well, if I know b equals negative 10, and m equals negative 6 over 4, or we simplified that to 3 over 2, we could write our line equation to be y equals 3 over 2x plus 10. I'd do a similar thing for my table. Um, another name for slope is rate of change. So I realized some people struggled on the table on question 2 because they didn't know that rate of change is the same as slope. So you find your slope on your table by just seeing what is happening when, when, we're, when we're going on our pattern. Um, I, I like to pick the numbers that are close. You can see on this table, they kind of go all over the place, which is fine. They, they do follow a consistent pattern, but it's because these things are jumping by too much um, that your pattern is kind of weird. I just picked the nicest two numbers. So we can see that we go down five for every one spot. And you'd see that you go down 10 for every 2. So it's just negative 5 over 1. And again, you want to find where this thing is equal to 0 for your y-intercept. And oh, look, they gave me 0 for my table. So I'd have y equals negative 5 over 1, x plus 3. And again, I knew my y-intercept is when x is 0. So I found that right there. And I can find my slope by seeing how much my y's change and how much my x's change. And again, you don't have to do it for every single point on the table. Just pick the two easiest points. Um, and that's what I would do. Let's try another one. Okay, so let's try these ones. Um, I had some people that ask on questions like parallel and perpendicular. Um, what parallel means is the slopes are the same. Now you might ask yourself, what's the slope to this line? And the answer is, I don't know yet, because it's not in the right form. So the first step we have to do for this one is we have to get this in the right form. To get this in the right form, we'd want to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I'm going to have negative 6y equals negative 3x um, plus 9. Then I'm going to divide by negative 6. And you might think, oh man, I'm going to get a decimal for this thing, which I don't want. Well, you don't really care. And the reason you don't really care is we just care about the slope. And when we look at this, our slope would be 1 half. So we really only did this process to find its slope, and its slope is the same to this line. But we don't know the b value. Um, and we're going to use this point to find the b value. So because we now know that this slope is 1 half, we can new, use that point to plug in 7 and plug in negative 2 and then find b which means you'd have 7 equals negative 1 plus b, which means you'd have b equals 8. So for this one, we get our equation to be y equals 1 half x plus 8. Okay, I'm going to kind of undo all that so that I have more clear space to work for the other problems. On the next one, you can see you have a slope of 0 and a point that goes through 2, negative 1. Well, that makes the problem really easy. And the reason it makes the problem really easy is because you have a slope of 0. So we would just say 
y equals 0, x plus b. Again, we have our point. This is x and this is y. So I just plug those in. Negative 1 equals 0 times 2 plus b, which means b is equal to negative 1. So you have y is equal to 0, x minus 1. On this, they want a line that's perpendicular to the given line and point. This is a tricky one because they didn't exactly give you the point straight up. You actually have to find that. And then you have to find the slope of the perpendicular line. So this slope, if you look at it, is up to and over 4. So it's 2 over 4, or if it's perpendicular, so we would change that. Um, to negative 4 over 2, which would be negative 2. So we'd have y equals negative 2x plus b. And now we need to use this point to find out the information. That point right there, if you count it out, would be over 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 4, negative 5. So we plug that in. Negative 5 equals negative 2 times 4 plus b. That'd be negative 5 equals negative 8 plus b. And then I'd add 8 to both sides, and I'd get that b is equal to 3. So then we'd have y equals negative 2x plus 3. Okay, for this last one, we have an x-intercept is 2 and a y-intercept is negative 2. Um, some people wanted to write this in standard form, I feel like, but you don't want to do that. You want to just use what you know. If the x-intercept is 5, then that'd be 5, 0. If the y-intercept is negative 2, that'd be 0, negative 2. And again, you know this because an x-intercept means the y value is 0, and a y-intercept means the x value is 0. So when we have these two things, what you'd want to do is you'd want to do what we did for the other problem where we used two points to find its slope. Well, I actually know it's y-intercept already, so I'm going to plug that actually in. But then I need to find its slope. And its slope, I'd use these two points. So I'd go 0 minus negative 2 over 5 minus 0. And that would give me 2 over 5. So those are those types of problems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a second video just for the word problems. And then post that in a little bit. So this is kind of the overarching things, and so now I'm going to have a second video just on the word problem.